ACB logo, ribbon below, 60th anniversary. Everybody, welcome. I'm very excited to uh, host our audio description panel on what's new in audio description. And we're going to start off with Mark Torres first, from, who's the vice president of captioning and audio description for Paramount Global. Then I will speak. I'm the co-chair of the audio description project, and I'll give you some talk about some ways to access the audio description. And then Dr. Joel Snyder, who is the founder and senior consultant for the audio description project, will talk about what the audio description project has been up to. It is my pleasure to introduce Mark Torres, who I had the pleasure of working with more than 20 years ago when I was at WGBH's Media Access Group, and he represented CBS, he still does, as part of the Paramount Global family. And the one thing I remember about Mark there is originally when the first audio description mandate was put in place, it got, the court took it away back in 2001, and Mark and CBS remained committed in to maintaining the audio description when not all of the other networks did so. So Mark has had a long, serious commitment. He has been involved in the world of audio description, captioning, accessibility for television broadcast for more than 40 years. He started out with IBM, where he was an intern and helped produce the very first primetime special ever to be captioned for the deaf and hard of hearing community, then went on to Showtime, and then went on to ABC, and then has been at CBS for decades, where he's been involved in audio description, which is what we will be talking about today. And now he oversees the audio description for the whole Paramount Global family, which includes, you know, uh, Paramount Plus, CBS, and all the other Viacom projects. So it, it's my pleasure. And he got some very, very exciting news to announce which is why we asked him to join us on the panel today. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Torres. Thank you, Carl. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Torres, Vice President, Captioning and Audio Description and Access Services for Paramount Global, formerly Viacom CBS, which includes the CBS television network. I'm very honored to be here with all of you today, representing our company, where I have spent almost 26 years of my 40 plus year career so far in the entertainment industry. At CBS, we strive to deliver high quality audio description and closed captioning to our consumers who rely upon accessibility. I'm here today to tell you where we have been, how we do it, and where we are going with audio description at the CBS TV network. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that I'm also one of the luckiest people in the entertainment industry to do this job that I do and love doing with my unique 40 plus year view on the evolution of accessibility in television. As Carl mentioned, my first exposure to accessibility was unexpected, but was in the summer of 1979 when I was a 21 year old executive intern at IBM World Headquarters in the corporate promotion and production department. It was there that I worked on an IBM primetime special for ABC called Barishnikov on Broadway, which became the first television special ever to air with closed captioning when captioning debuted on the networks 42 years ago this month, the week of March 16, 1980 which is coming up this week, actually. But my real beginning of what would become a career dedicated in service to consumers who rely upon accessibility began in 1981 at the Legacy Viacom's new Showtime pay cable network, where I was hired as employee number 77. Viacom's nascent Showtime took a voluntary lead in the pay cable industry when John Biner's Bazaar, which is the program where the late actor Bob Einstein, actually the actor Albert Brooks's brother, as the beloved character of Super Dave Osborne, you may recall. This show became the first ever captioned cable comedy series, and we just kept growing it from there. In 1988, I joined ABC as the manager of closed captioning, and in my time there, we voluntarily grew captioning from 20 hours per week to almost 100 hours per week by the time I left in 1996. Then in 1996, from the day I arrived at the legacy CBS, later the former Viacom CBS, and now Paramount Global, almost 26 years ago, I was part of the senior team that took a very forward-looking view and approach towards voluntary growth and accessibility, which we knew was the right thing to do. This included, at the time, 
adding captioning to every regional CBS sports broadcast, such as NCAA basketball and the NFL. This unwavering support I received when I arrived at CBS from the highest levels of the company down to the hardworking folks who tirelessly get these shows in the air was and remains unequaled. And that continues today at the new Paramount Global. So when audio description came onto our radar around the year 2000, and I first met Joel Snyder, actually, I'll be this here today, there was no hesitation of legacy CBS. We were all in. When the FCC's first regulations for audio description took effect, also almost 20 years ago to this day, April 1st, 2002, we launched audio description on CBS that our most popular primetime shows of the day, such as CSI and NCIS, along with a three-hour Saturday morning educational and informational block, we call EI, of programs primarily intended for children. We also committed at the outset to providing audio description for all theatrical and made-for-TV movies and selected specials, all above and beyond what the FCC required at the time. So when the FCC's first regulation was struck down by the U.S. Court of Appeals in October 2002, just six months after they took effect, there was no running for the door at CBS. And in fact, we doubled down. We committed to maintain and continue to grow more suddenly the former FCC mandated 50 hours of audio description per calendar quarter. We continue to voluntarily meet and beat those 50 hours per calendar quarter for the next 10 years until the FCC's audio description regulations were reinstated in 2012 to where the requirement is now 87.5 hours per calendar quarter and which we've also continuously met and beat since 2002. So I'm very proud of the number of hours and programs that CBS has audio described over these first 20 years. Year after year, we've consistently delivered by an average of 30 to 50% above the FCC's mandates for audio description. Okay, so let's talk about today here. I've been checking the pulse of this unique access service industry for decades, and I can tell you that the vibe, if you will, on audio description is as exciting right now as when casting became mainstream. More and more people that I speak with today and who do not rely upon accessibility now know what audio description is. And I believe the audio description's breakthrough moment to the mainstream is right now. You may wonder how we create audio description. So TV distribution is similar to water or power distribution, simplistically, stating, simplistically speaking. It comes to you from an upstream source like water and power and is delivered to your home. But unlike water and power, television consumers do not turn on the faucet or the switch and it just flows. It involves many very complex different testable processes from the program production to post-production, editing, audio, visual effects, et cetera, and then onto the delivery of CBS where the completed audio description and captioning files are added to the shows in preparation for network broadcast to our affiliates and own stations. The affiliates, CBS affiliates, along with our 15 CBS owned and operated stations like WCBS New York and KCBS Los Angeles, they are our local partners. The CBS television network, if you don't know uh, the model, is in effect the wholesaler and each station is a retailer. And then in between us both are the multi-channel video program distributors or MVPDs, it's a mouthful, but they are the cable and fiber satellite distributors to deliver the signal to your home, like Fios or Comcast. So if everything's working right, you hear perfect audio description and as is always our intention. But technical issues sometimes do occur with all, all aspects of content delivery. And in those rare cases where audio description is impacted, our engineering teams work rapidly to remediate them. As in any business that buys outside services or goods, there's always a confluence of price and quality. At CBS, quality for audio description and closed captioning takes the highest precedence, followed by price as a distant second. The preparation and production of our high quality audio description begins ideally about four days before of air. It starts with our access service providers receiving a digital asset file, which in the old days was a videotape, of the completed or nearly completed program. Over the next two days, the access services vendors highly dedicated staff write the audio description, edit it, record and produce it. Delivery to CBS then usually occurs about one or two days before air. Then with high security content, Survivor and the Amazing Race, 
they require high security audio description and closed captioning protocols. Any public leaks about such content and events there can have very serious impacts on our company and our partners. So at the behest, uh, so at our behest, in early 2020, one of our primary access services vendors built and opened a special high security access services authoring bunker, if you will, for this purpose. And it's allowed us to add audio description to these shows where production and delivery constraints allow. These shows are very, very uh, tightly held, you know, and they're, they're really top secret to everybody until the end. So if anything leaked out of, uh, you know, a confidential nature, you know, we, 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 have, we have the highest confidence in everybody, but as you've probably heard in the past, there have been content security leaks over the years with some companies. We've not had them and we don't want them. So we take those, uh, those steps to avoid that. Once the audio description of files delivered to CBS, our team in Los Angeles builds a show to include audio description and captioning. The completed show is then digitally pushed or sent from CBS Los Angeles to the CBS Broadcast Center in New York, where it's ingested into our digital servers and then played to air with audio description and closed captioning at time of air, where it goes all the way downstream to you, where our consumers rely upon accessibility. From the outset of audio description in CBS in April 2002, we set a policy that our commitment to audio description for a particular series would be for the entire life cycle of the show. We would never go backwards with audio description, only forward. And we have always kept that promise. This is why we choose only shows for CBS network audio description that have consistent deliveries. The last thing we want to do is add a show that causes consumer confusion if we're to find ourselves only be able to provide inconsistent audio description from week to week, where, for example, if we could get it one week, but not on the air the next week. For example, our three excellent, very popular, highly popular and highly rated FBI shows have extremely tight production schedules. And while we are unable to provide audio description on the CBS network at this time for FBI, FBI Most Wanted and FBI International, we make sure that all three shows have audio description on our very popular and successful Paramount Plus premium service. So as in the case of the FBI's, we always try to find a way to cement, make this work. And streaming has been an extremely helpful avenue uh, to us in this quest. So the top quality and results of the audio description you hear on CBS are the result of many, many dedicated individuals, both inside and outside of Paramount Global, who work tirelessly with great diligence to serve our consumers and require accessibility. All right, Carl, so this brings me to the most exciting part of what I'm here to tell you all today. As many of you may already know, our Paramount Plus streaming service has been voluntarily adding audio description where it's not required in streaming. So the original audio, con original content, including movies, along with every CBS network show that already has audio description. Then at the beginning of 2021-22, CBS network season last fall, Paramount Plus took the lead by also adding audio description to almost every pre-recorded scripted CBS primetime program that did not already have audio description. Well, I'm very pleased to let you all know today, and you're the first to hear it, that effective immediately, the CBS television network has committed to adding audio description to almost all of our pre-recorded scripted primetime shows and those pre-recorded reality reward shows for deliveries allow such as Survivor, which we added last week, and The Amazing Reese. And this coming week, we're adding Come Dance With Me, a dance reality show. So along with our previous commitment, this also adds to our commitment for describing as many movies as special as possible. This will now voluntarily bring our average weekly totals of audio description on CBS to about 18 hours in prime time. Pardon one second, my earbud fell out. <laughs> This will voluntarily bring our average weekly totals of audio scripts on CBS to about 18 hours in prime time, along with the continued three hours in the educational informative block for an average of about 21 hours per week of description. On average, CBS will now deliver to our consumers two to two and a half times the amount of the FCC's currently mandated audio description. CBS will continue to update the public as we add more and new shows like Come Dance with Me This Week with audio description including by way of our current audio described program listing page, which you can find at cbs.com forward slash video hyphen description forward slash. Basically, if you go to the bottom of the CBS uh, homepage, 
you'll find a link for audio description or it's still listed as video description and you change it, but it's listed there at the bottom of the page. So you can find it right at the bottom of cbs.com. This huge growth in our audio description schedule I've just announced here today was finalized so quickly that our web team couldn't perform the required maintenance on our descriptions listing page I've talked about here in time for this announcement. We expect that the listings page will be updated to current within the next 30 days. But until then, rest assured, you can now tune into almost any scripted primetime program in CBS and you will hear audio description. In closing, I want to tell all of you I couldn't be prouder of what our teams will accomplish and deliver to our consumers in these first 20 years of audio description on CBS and for the great things that lie ahead for our audio description consumers. Thank you. That's, that's all I have to deliver. That's a lot. That's great. So I'm looking forward to watching a lot more CBS because I'm a cord cutter and I, I haven't watched a lot of uh, cable or broadcast lately, but now CBS has given me a reason to do so. So I'm very excited about that. So most nights of the week, I'll be able to turn on programming, if I understand you correctly, between the hours of 8 of 11 and almost uh, with most content, find something that's audio described as long as it's pre-scripted and pre-programmed. That would be correct. We, uh, I say we're adding come dance me this week. The FBI's remain uh, a deliverable uh, problem, which is, you know, it's a creative show and they, they, they do what they have to do. But again, that's on Paramount Plus. But yeah, it's a lot to uh, impart. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, been a that's very, fun. very, very uh, great 20 years for us. And we're looking forward to oh, that's more very and more. And I, Mark, I hope that you guys serve as a leader so that the other eight entities under the CBAA, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, uh, follow you and, and, and follow your commitment. So that'll be great. And I'm assuming that's what you meant, that uh, when you said earlier, you feel like we're on the cusp of audio description expanded, that you see more and more coming along. I, I really do, Carl. You know, um... I equate it, and if uh, folks know the early Saturday Night Live sketch during Weekend Update with Chevy Chase and uh, the great Garrett Morris, and uh, it probably wouldn't be uh, tasteful today to show this clip, although maybe they still do, but they did what they called news to the deaf and hard of hearing, I think it was. Right. And basically Chevy Chase was speaking the news and Garrett Morris was shouted out, you know, in a bubble. And people literally asked me for the first 20 years of captioning, is there somebody in a bubble shouting or speaking? And so, you know, when captioning became uh, regulated and built in TVs, it became mainstream. And now everyone knows captioning. And I really feel description is there right now. I get that same response now, talking to people about it. They know that it's there. People I find are using it who are not, uh, you know, visually impaired or blind just because it's there to help them. And so uh, we know there's ancillary uses to all these uh, accessibility services. And I think description really has taken that, that place in the forefront now. Mark, this is Kim Charlson, and I want to apologize for not being here to give you your your due introduction um, today, um, your bio background, but I, I want our listeners to understand that certainly your, your leadership in the area of audio description in, in broadcast television is really exemplary, and you know, thank you for, for what you've done, for the trail you've blazed, and for the leadership that you've demonstrated today to us um, with the increase in coverage of audio description for CBS Prime Time. I think it's phenomenal and congratulations. Well, th thank you, Kim. It You're really here. takes a village. You know, I I'm the face of it, but there's so many, so many people inside and outside of the company who get this done for us and many unsung heroes. So I Absolutely. thank you on behalf of the entire team inside and outside of Paramount Global. Okay, great. Well, Mark, Stick around because we're going to try to leave a few minutes for questions at the end. So if you don't mind sticking around for the full hour. Not at all. Okay, great. So I'm going to be quick. I wanted to allow Mark to talk and because I think he's probably the, uh, many of you hear from Joel and I on a regular basis and I wanted to make sure everybody heard from Mark because that's quite exciting. Um, and if you're a Star Trek fan, you got to check out Paramount. Uh, plus, because that you got Picard, you got Discovery, you got Lower Deck, you got Star Trek Prodigy. I'm a Star Trek fan, and and I'm hoping maybe someday we'll see some of the older Legacy series. Not that I'm putting in a plug, but I'm just hoping. Uh, audio described. So moving on, Mark described a little bit of how the landscape is, and while I, what I'm going to talk about 
is not necessarily new, but I think audio description is getting complex and that there's a number of ways we can access it. And I just want to give people some ideas on how they can access it. Many of you on this call will know that, but I think it'll be new to some of you also. So what is the simplest way? Let's, we're going to go from the simplest way to the more involved ways on how to access audio description. The simplest way you can get it is thanks to the CVAA, the 21st Century Video Communications and Accessibility Act, is that the four broadcast channels are required to carry the 87 and a half hours, which Mark mentioned, which are CBS, NBC, ABC, and Fox. If you just have a TV with no cable and nothing else, and, and it's even a, 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 what they call a dumb TV today, and all, of the, all a dumb TV means is that it does not have the ability to connect to the internet without a uh, peripheral connected to it. it. And you have it simply hooked up to a, an antenna or a digital antenna, you can get those four channels without paying extra for free. And as long as you activate your SAP button, you can access the four channels with 87 and a half hours of audio description. So I just wanted people to be aware that they can even access it that way. And if you want to know what's on the four broadcast, I'm going to put in the plug for the audio description project website, both Fred Brock and Timothy Wynn and others do an excellent job of keeping our list up to date. You can view it by network, you can view it by day, you can get a full list on what's on the four broadcast network. Okay. Next, if you do have cable, thanks to the CVAA, the four broadcast networks and the five top rated cable networks, which I believe, and I'm hoping I'm right because I'm doing this from memory, HGTV, History, the Learning Channel, Hallmark, and TBS. I believe are the five channels. You can ask that they're required to also do 87 and a half hours per quarter. And many of the cable, thanks again to the CVA, many of the cable franchises such as Comcast and, and uh, let's see, um, the other, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting, blanking out on the other larger cable companies. They are required. AT&T, some of those. Thank you. They yeah. are required by law to give you an accessible cable box, which has talking menus and text to speech. So you can not only um, activate the second audio program, the SAP channel, but you can find out what's on TV. And they're supposed to provide you those cable boxes at no extra charge. You just need to talk to someone. For example, Comcast has a accessibility disability hotline. So you just need to talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. So that if you have cable, you'll have access to at least nine channels. With, and I say at least because there's a couple of extra channels that are sometimes doing it, even though they're not required. And again, you can check out the audio description website for a full listing of all the networks and channels. And I'm sorry I'm going so fast, guys, but I just want to make sure I get this in so we can allow Joel to talk and then open it up to questions. Next, they are the streaming services. And this is where the most audio description is currently happening. You heard Mark mention Paramount Plus. And this is, um, there are actually a total of eight streaming services, potentially nine if you count one of the others, which I will mention, Apple TV Plus, um, Apple TV, which is iTunes, you can rent or purchase. In that case, uh, that video on demand. Disney, Hulu, uh, Netflix, Prime Video, Peacock, and Paramount Plus. And HBO they might even Max. be. What was that? HBO Max. HBO Max. I knew I forgot one. Thank you. <laughs> and there might even be more to follow soon. Uh, from what I'm hearing. And they all have different types of catalogs. For instance, Paramount has the Star, Fra Star Trek franchise, CSI, HBO has a lot of the uh, DC Universe, 
Um, Disney has a lot of the Disney classics and has even gone back and described their back catalog all the way back to Steamboat Willie, which is the first cartoon that ever introduced uh, Mickey Mouse in the sound cartoon and Snow White. And so a lot of the classics that many of us didn't get to see as young children because we were visually impaired. We can now, they have the Star Wars franchise and the Pixar. Um, uh, they all have their strength and it depends what you want and they all have a, a monetary fee. There are several ways to watch these streaming services and I will go over each. And by the way, they have several hundred thousands of hours. I mean, um, Apple, for instance, they don't have a large catalog, but the unique thing about Apple is they audio describe every single show in nine languages. Every single one of their products is in nine different languages with audio description. And they also do everything in Dolby Atmos, which is, um, to my knowledge, they're the only streaming service that does that as of now. Um, and, and, and things like that. Netflix even has a white paper on the quality of the audio description and they're committed to doing things such as naming the describer and the voice talent and things like that in their product. So they all offer good audio description and do different things. So you'll have to do some um, investigating. And again, you can look at what's on each one of these streaming services and it sounds like I'm plugging it, but I am because Kim and I are the co-chairs of the audio description project. At the audio description website, each service has a unique page that you can see what titles are on there, and along with what's in the uh, movie theaters. We're not going to talk much about that today, but there are also, now that the movie theaters are opening up with the pandemic starting to come to an end, you can go to the movie theaters and see audio description by requesting a headset. So the, the many ways to watch streaming, and I'm gonna go from simplest to um, more involved again, is you can get a smart television. Thanks again to the CVAA, the 21st Century Video Accessibility Act. And it's one of my, I think it's the most revolutionary law since the um, ADA in terms of what it does for the deaf and hard of hearing community, the deaf blind community, the blind community, um, because it, it provides communication access for the, uh, and equipment for the deaf blind. It provides quality captioning for the deaf relay services. So the CVA is a very, the CVAA is a very comprehensive act. And as many of you know, will be one of our legislative imperatives as we go to um, meet with our legislators in the next couple of days asking them to um, re-up the a new version of the CVA to change with the change in times and technology. So um, take a look at that when Clark talks to Clark and others talk about it in the next couple of days. One, smart television. There are, thanks to the CVAA, the smart television now have screen reading capability, and you can access the menu, and you can access the internet. I, for instance, have an LG TV set, and I access all the streaming services I just mentioned fully without any assistance with the use of a screen reader, and I'm able to turn off audio description for all of those. And so, and there are many brands that do this, not just LG. LG, Samsung, Toshiba, Toshiba, Insignia, Panasonic. Um, as of 2016, the TV sets are all supposed to be accessible to blind, and that's one way. I think some are slightly more accessible than others, so you may want to, but like any of the Fire TV brands, which is Insignia, Toshiba, Toshiba, use the Amazon Fire TV, uh, that's fairly accessible. LG is very accessible. Um, Samsung is another very accessible brand. So that's one way to access all the programming. Since I bought my LG TV six months ago, I have never used a streaming player to connect to the TV, which I'll get to in a minute. So another way to access these streaming services is over the internet through a browser, whether it be Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Microsoft Edge, all these streaming services have 
website that you log into because most of them are paid subscriptions or, or that or that nature. And you can log in and watch them over your browser on a um, on a computer, on a smart device, that sort of thing. So that's another way to access these. Um, and the audio description project is working with the various streaming services to try to get their pages more accessible so that we can access it. Another way is with a streaming device, which you attach to your TV through a um, HDMI port. And an example would be a Fire Stick, an Apple TV, a Chromecast, a Roku, again, thanks to the CVAA, they all have to be made accessible. Now, I will tell you that some are more accessible than others. So the two I would look at if I were going to go to streaming player route would be either the, the Fire, any of the Amazon Fire products, the Fire Stick, the Fire Player, or Apple TV. Those are the two that are most accessible. Um, the, the, the Chromecast by Google and the Roku, while they're accessible, they need a little more work. And in the opinion of, of Carl, not, not an opinion of ACB or anybody, but I just, but there are those who do it. And so streaming devices are another way. And lastly, we all carry these devices in our pocket or our tablets, such as smartphones that can then, that can access. Most of these services all have apps and are fairly accessible. Um, where you can download the app, log in, and then listen to, you know, where I have uh, very little remaining vision. I often am listening to a show while walking my dog um, uh, in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm listening to Star Trek Discovery while walking the dog or, or um, you know, a show on Netflix. So, so that's another way to do it through your smart, smart phone or smart device. So those are the ways that we can access streaming services. And there are also DVDs um, where you can um, get a full list of the DVDs that are available. And many of your talking book libraries across the country for the blind and visually impaired have these DVDs. And there also is movie theaters, uh, films in the movie theaters. Most of the main titles are audio described nowadays. Uh, I would say about 90%. Uh, occasionally a smaller movie is not, but the majority of titles are audio described. And by law, a different law other than the CVA, by the Department of Justice guidelines, all digital theaters are required to have equipment that can provide captioning and audio description. And um, they are the only exemption right now are theaters that are still shown analog and there's probably a handful in the country and drive-in movie theaters. They also don't have to do it at this point in time. Although I suspect they're doing digital too. So I'm hoping that changes someday. But movie theaters are required to have the equipment to play. I will say if you do go to a movie theater though, because not, uh, a large number of blind people go to the movies. They're not always trained on how to do it. It's best to call the theater ahead of time and let them know you're coming so they can prepare and be ready for you when you come in. Um, we don't shouldn't have to do that, but it, I find that I have a higher success rate when we do that. So those are just the multiple ways to access the audio description. As Mark said, I think we're on the cup of things. I see many things coming in the future. I think more of the streaming services they've already started are going to start to do audio description, just like Apple and multiple languages. I think hopefully some of the live streaming services, uh, services such as Sling TV and Fubo TV and, and um, maybe even Paramount Plus Mark will eventually have the ability to air the shows um, that are live with audio description where you can select a language. And I think th th we're in for some very exciting time. I wanna give the, uh, thank everybody for the opportunity to speak. And I wanna give, uh, have Kim introduce Joe Snyder. All right, thanks, Carl. That was a lot of great. I know, and I went fast. It was, it was good. You talked fast, but you packed it in there. So. 
thank you. And I'm sure there'll be questions um, as we come to the end, but I'm happy to recognize, to give an update on the audio description project, um, Joel Snyder, senior consultant and founder of the audio description project, now moving into its 12th year with ACB. So Joel, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Good, good afternoon. And Carl, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. I want to add my congratulations to my, my friend and colleague, Mark Duritz from CBS. He has been a leader in this area, as you already have heard, and it is so great that CBS is one, once again taking the lead with audio description. And um, speaking of the audio description project, Kim and Carl are the co-chairs of our audio description project, and they have run it marvelously with a, a, a list of subcommittees, uh, oh golly, six or seven. Anyway, it's been great. The purpose of our audio description project is to boost levels of description activity and disseminate information on that work throughout the nation. It, its major goal is to sponsor a broad range of activities designed to build awareness of description in the general public as well as its principal users. Most of the folks who are listening right now, people who are blind or have low vision. Our work throughout 2021 uh, and on into 2022 has been challenging in a positive way uh, in spite of and, and maybe because of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, last year, ACB increased its commitment to the vitality of the project by creating a staff position responsible for its coordination and administration. The charming and talented JoLynn Bailey Page, I'm sure she's listening. Uh, I continue on with the ADP as its founder and senior consultant, and I focus principally on special projects, including our, our really tremendously successful audio description training programs. Indeed, uh, one week from tomorrow, we begin our 19th Audio Description Institute, our third virtual institute. We have 43 registrants from 19 states and two other countries, Italian, Italian Italy, and Spain. Uh, we have seven faculty, including three people who are blind, and of course, the fantastic uh, Deb Cook-Lewis as our Zoom administrator. The institute is five uh, half days, and uh, on our first two days, primarily, we'll be joined by various members of our steering committee and its subcommittees uh, who will audit the proceedings. They're, they are almost all uh, are people who are blind. And I'll tell you, they're all fierce advocates uh, for more and better audio description. They're eager to learn more, even more about the fundamentals of audio description. Um, in the performing arts, uh, even as so many performance spaces have been closed, we have continued to work on adding to our listings of performing arts space uh, audio description offerings. Uh, uh, Sheila Young chairs our, our subcommittee there. And you know, you can help us actually. Let us know about the performing arts spaces in your states that offer audio description. We're working on the possibility of audio description scripts for professional touring productions and an initiative in New York City to encourage description at every performance of productions providing, uh, provided by live, by well, provided live, I should say, by well-trained describers. The describers are almost always alive. Uh, in museums, and, and that's, uh, Sheila runs that Performing Arts Museums uh, Parks Committee. Most recently with museums, we sponsored and produced an audio described tour of the Smithsonian Institution's Insect Zoo at the National Museum of Natural History. We're working on improvements at the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. We're advising the Motion Picture Academy of Performing Arts and Sciences regarding description for their new museum in Los Angeles. Uh, and here again, we continue to collect information on, on audio description tours available at museums nationwide. Please let us know what's going on in your state. And we continue to work closely with the National Park Service, advising, uh, collaborating with them on improving accessibility, including description of brochures and exhibits, other features at visitor centers at the at National Park Service sites. They have been a fantastic government agency uh, uh, leading the way in uh, description. Our media subcommittee is run by the, the one and only Carl Richardson. We've been especially active there. We, we have an, uh, an ACB resolution that we worked with that was passed that discourages the use of text-to-speech for audio description in film. So we're working with uh, folks like Amazon.com, 
to encourage them to eliminate or limit its use. We've been active members of the FCC's Disability Advisory Committee. We continue to advocate for more and better description on the various streaming services that Carl told you about. And of course, our website is the go-to place for information about media description, but also for information on all things that have to do with audio description, run by the capable Fred Brack. Write this down, remember this. I want you all to visit our website at least once later today, https colon slash slash adp.acb.org. Visit it once a week, at least. Our baby contest, Benefits of Audio Description in Education, is sponsored in collaboration with the uh, marvelous Described and Captioned Media program. That, that, uh, our, our baby contest is thriving. We give awards to kids who write reviews of described media. Uh, and speaking of our awards, our, our Audio Description Awards uh, effort recognizes the very finest in audio description activity in the US and around the world. And, and by the way, the Beatty contest, going back to that, uh, we have actually uh, encouraged a spinoff based in Australia, it's serving the entire Australasia region. Uh, and we're, we're consulting with the WBU, the World Blind Union's new CEO, Mark Workman, on how we might spread the impact of that Beatty contest uh, worldwide. Uh, let's see, both last year and this year, we coordinated a series of excellent workshops uh, on all aspects of audio description at, uh, at uh, our Audio Description Project Conference, which is really a conference within a conference, the ACB Conference and Convention. So please plan on joining us in Omaha or online in July. Uh, we'll have some great sessions there. Uh, and during the conference, tune in to our Audio Described Tours channel recordings of a wide range of audio described tours of museums and national park service sites from around the nation. We're working right now to add tours to that channel. What else? Boy, last December, this was fun. We sponsored a special program. Actually, the last two Christmases on ACB radio, we sponsored a Christmas themed media, uh, a, sex, uh, a whole hour of Christmas themed media that included audio description and included a visit from Santa Claus himself. Oh, 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 oh. How about that? Anyway, uh, we've made important strides, uh, by the way, at uh, fostering greater use of description in federal government agencies. Pat uh, Sheehan leads our 508 subcommittee. And also under the capable uh, leadership of our own Tony Stevens, we sponsored our first ever AD Gala last November as a fundraiser for the ADP. And we honored media producers for their commitment to including audio description in their broadcast. It really was a tremendous success. We did it virtually. We'll do it virtually again this year. And then maybe in 2023, we'll be in some grand theater somewhere. Um, and, and this is in addition to the annual Audio Description Award, Project Awards, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, they recognize the audio description, audio described programs themselves, the audio description producers uh, throughout this country and abroad. Uh, I continue to speak virtually, uh, at least this last year and, and the year before, at ACB affiliate conventions and conferences uh, all around the world to spread the good word uh, about audio description and the audio description project. Uh, and by the way, in a, in a collaboration with the World Blind Union, we just, just recently, just about a month ago, released the Spanish version of my book, uh, published by the American Council of the Blind, the Visual Made Verbal, a comprehensive training manual and guide to the history and applications of audio description. It's available now in print in five languages. Uh, Chinese and Italian editions are in the works. The Chinese edition should be out in about two months. It's available in Bard uh, and Bookshare as an audio book or in Braille from the Library of Congress. So if you want a, a, a deep read on audio description, uh, take a look at that book. Or of course, it's a great soporific. If you're having trouble getting to sleep at night, you know, just plug that in and you're pulling right out. I've heard it's a great doorstop as well. Anyway, that's uh, the book. 
And with that, I look forward to much more activity promoting audio description and uh, the ACB's audio description project throughout 2022 and in 2023. Thanks much, and I look forward to any questions you may have. Thanks, Kim. Uh, before we before we move on, I just want to add just one more committee. Oh, good subcommittee, the Section 508 committee. Oh, I did mention that, Pat. Yes, Pat. Oh, Sheena. you did mention I Pat. Did. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Okay. okay, got it. My apologies. <laughs> Not at all. Great. Thank you, Joel, for that um, nice overview of um, what the audio description project committees are working on. And there's a lot going on, as you can tell. Um, I just want to give a plug um, in addition to what Joel said about the um, AD Awards Gala. Um, if you didn't get a chance, and I hope you all did, but if not, um, visit the website adawardsgala.org and you'll have, you can view um, the November 2021 Gala Awards Ceremony, which was wonderful. And again, recognized um, a lot of industry leaders for their role and their commitment to audio description. And we will be having the second AD Awards Gala um, in November. Um, the date soon will be announced. A Save the Date announcement will be coming. And we were getting started with all the planning and activities surrounding that virtual event, as Joel mentioned. So we appreciate everybody's um, generosity. We had a lot of individual donors to support the AD Awards Gala. Um, we had corporate support. We had industry support. Um, so it was really a very big, successful event and the first of its kind for ACB. So um, it was really well done. And if you saw the highlights of ACB video that was aired yesterday, we even got a nice, nice plug for audio description from Jason Momoa. So who can't be happy about that, you know? So um, the, the opportunity, um, everybody was so good that it did leave some time for some questions. So I'm hoping that um, our facilitator can, um, can see if there's any raised hands of folks who would like to ask a question. And if not, and we, we don't have time, and we certainly have a lot to talk about, but we want to give you an opportunity to ask some questions. If we don't get to everybody's question, try to send an email um, to questions at acb.org. If we don't get to it now, we will follow up with you absolutely via email. So um, do we have any questions at this time? We do have some raised hands, but if I may very quickly, I'd like to run over the commands for raising hands and Perfect. Un unmuting. Thank you. All right. Uh, if you are on a PC and you'd like to raise your hand, you will do that with Alt-Y. Uh, on a Mac, you'll press Option-Y. If you're on your smart device, the raised hand button is going to be at the bottom of your screen in the very center. And if you were on a telephone, you will raise your hand with star nine to unmute or to mute. Uh, once I allow you to talk, if you're on a PC, you can unmute with alt A. If you're on a Mac, it's command shift A. If you're on your smart device, the mute unmute button is a toggle and located in the lower left hand corner of your screen. And if you're on a telephone, you will mute or unmute with star six. And our first raised hand is someone with uh, telephone 609 ending in 682. You may, yeah, there you are. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. thank you. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Hi, this is Wanda Woolford from New Jersey. And I have a question for, um, for Mark from Paramount. So Mark, I am a Paramount Plus subscriber. Um, I have loved CBS content for many, many years. And thanks to audio description, it's kind of enhanced my experience with all the CBS um, primetime shows. So I have two quick questions for you. Number one being, what I struggle with is um, keeping the audio description enabled through all my devices. So I have cut the cord 
And so I use my Paramount Plus for um, most of my primetime viewing. And what I notice is that between my PC, my phone, and my television, um, the audio description, I have to constantly um, turn it on um, when I'm watching Paramount Plus. That's the first question. Second question is um, my favorite show on CBS of all time, believe it or not, is Big Bang Theory, which is no longer, obviously, it's off the air. However, because I cut the cord, I don't have it available to me in syndication. So what I noticed is that it is no longer um, part of the Paramount Plus programming. I I don't see it anywhere, so am I missing it? So um, thanks, Mark, so much. And guys, this was a great presentation. It is available on HBO Max with audio description, however. Thank you, Carl. I didn't know that. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. I'm going to check further, but I appreciate that. And uh, the struggle with devices is what we call persistence. That's when we would expect uh, the settings to maintain themselves. And so do you find persistence when you go back in the same device or is it when changing devices, you no longer have persistence? Changing devices. Okay. Well, I'm not the engineer, um, although I play one on TV to some degree, but <laughs> I will talk to our folks in the development team. Our product team stays very closely attuned to our consumer needs and concerns, and I'll bring this to their attention, and hopefully we can find thank a solution. You. That would thank be you. Great. Thanks for taking the Thank you, Wanda. Thanks. That was thank a you. really terrific question. Thanks, Wanda. So, and and it's my privilege, really, just my privilege to serve all of you. I mean, uh, I'm really very lucky to have the job that I do. So thank you for all of your support. Thank you for what you do. Oh. You're very welcome. Okay, right. our, our next raised hand is Jewel. Hi, um, I am also a cord cutter. I have not watched cable in over a decade. Um, and my question is to anybody who might know the information. Um, Netflix was mentioned as well as Disney, HBO Max, Paramount Prime. And I believe you kind of went over Amazon Prime Prime a little bit because you were mentioning less text-to-speech descriptions. Um, what is the update on getting more description to other programs such as Hulu and more on Amazon Prime and such um, and other programs as well? Uh, what is the information that's out there right now and the, where that stands? So this is Carl. I'll jump in real quick. Um, so with streaming services, there is no mandate. And so all the streaming services are at this time doing it on a voluntary basis. We do hope with the new version of the CBA that the file will always follow the show. And I don't know, I mean, to be honest, most of the streaming services are doing their own original programming that they own and create and are requesting files if something comes to their service from somewhere else. For instance, HBO Max got Big Bang Theory from Paramount Global, and they got the files that probably aired on CBS when it was originally aired. So um, I, 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 so Amazon is, is trying to increase the amount of audio description and taking up a bit of an unusual uh, approach to it to increase it. So to my knowledge, um, they're the only ones that are going beyond doing their programming that they actually own and then requesting files that come with the products that were already audio described. So I would say the best route is for us to advocate for folks to have everything audio described when they go to the of uh, uh, various streaming services. So, so, so there's really no new news. Um, we're still advocating for more and quality audio description. And I do think we're gonna start to see, hopefully with, with Paramount Global's announcement that Mark told us all prime, because everything, Paramount Global is looking at this from a large perspective because they, ha they, they have movies, they have streaming and they have broadcast and they're all gonna intersect with each other at some point. So that's why I think they're increasing the amount of audio description. 
but I can have it in all those areas. And I see the Disney owns HBO and Hulu and 20th Century and, and Comcast owns Peacock and NBC Universal and Universal Studios. So I do see over time now that the streaming wars is starting to settle down and people have built the platforms and then destruction infrastructure, excuse me, that audio description will increase. And I do agree with Mark wholeheartedly that we are about to be on the cup of increased audio description, but we haven't heard anything officially from anybody saying they're going to do it. Carl, I know that I was would, a long answer. Well, that was a good answer though, I think. Um, and I would add that um, the other entity to watch in the streaming um, not so distant future is um, Discovery and um, HBO Max. Um, AT&T or Warner Media is merging with Discovery um, this spring, and that brings HBO Max into the Discovery family. And I think Discovery Plus is um, going to change you know, a lot of what it's doing. HBO Max is going to merge into that. They've got a lot to sort out to figure out where it is, but in the long run, I think it's gonna be a plus for audio description. So hope that helps you understand <laughs> the complexity of, of, of what streaming services are doing, but I think there will be more to come. Mark, do you have anything to add that maybe Kim and I didn't touch on? No, Carl, you, you touched about it. You know, I think um, this comes back to my comment uh, earlier about uh, all the aspects of TV not being although it's a down, upstream, downstream sort of pattern like water and power, the moving parts are so complex and streaming has grown so quickly. You know, our companies have merged and, and grown. Um, and I think all of our companies tend to have many silos where, um, as we call them, assets lie. And I think it's a matter of, as we all move to the cloud and merge these silos with our companies, I think it's gonna be a natural progression that these assets will flow more freely. I mean, I can tell you from my own experience that since my initial involvement as the manager of Caption, ABC and 88, I've always been about recycling files. I'm always offering the entities to reuse them. And um, you know, I'm very, very big on recycling of these files in the beginning. So I, I think you'll see more and more of that as our, our silos become uh, more unified. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Okay, ready to take the next raise hand? Uh, next, we have Ann and D.A. Pimley. Question. We receive uh, described video, audio uh, on several different uh, channels, uh, but we're having some trouble with PBS. Channel, you know, shows that are labeled as being uh, described. Uh, our PBS uh, affiliate says that they're passing on the uh, description our provider saying anything that they receive that's you know described as, as being passed on to the consumer but we're not getting it it's a question who do we talk to because neither one of them wants to take uh, credit or blame for the problem did you say P pbs that's in the public broadcasting system yes sir okay so by law every station and Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Every station is supposed to have a captioning contacted listed on their website for quality concerns and, and making sure that the captions are carried through. It has been my experience. I know Kim does this all the time. She'll call sometimes during the show, talk to the caption and engineer, and before the show's even over, the audio description will be turned on. So it, I would suggest reaching out to the captioning contact because they're often the same people that also do the audio description because um, they both are seen as accessibility features. So I would reach out to whoever is required to do captioning for your local television station. Yeah, Thank and you. this is Kim. And if that doesn't work, feel free to, to contact me or Carl and, um, did you tell us who your your provider was, your cable I have, or? But, uh, we're we're using Spectrum right now. Okay, that's helpful because if you can't resolve it through your local affiliate, as just what Carl said, then we would go back to Spectrum and help advocate for you and with you. 
So we um, had the same problem with AT and T. Yeah, yeah, so it it does happen. So PBS getting as opposed to they should for the shows that they are identifying with audio description. You know they should be passing it through so we'll we'll try to help you out and have a conversation with that captioning expert at your affiliate and if that doesn't work reach out through the acb office to me or to carl and they'll tell you how to reach us all right thank you thank you, uh, you and, and you should also know that when those uh emails come to us uh i'm behind the scene there and i filter those out to the appropriate parties and in the case of a local affiliate i'll often go right to our affiliate relations uh relations team at CBS, the CBS station, and we'll reach out to the general manager and get things fixed very quickly. But um, when you mentioned the MVPD, as we call them, uh, Comcast, Charter, um, they're all great partners, but there's so many moving parts in their end that mm -hmm. things can often get uh, whacked, as we say, in the turnaround, the signal is being processed as I refer to so many times. And then the other problem you can often face with the MVPD is if you call a customer uh, help center, the people there on the general lines aren't always uh, trained specifically how to answer accessibility calls. And uh, many times they'll say, uh, call, call the network or, or call whoever else, but that's because um, you haven't gotten the right person. So I think Carl's right as as, uh, as Kim, when you find the right person, they'll get fixed. And um, I think the best way to start is as Carl mentioned with the uh, captioning contact. Yeah. yeah, good advice, Mark, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, we don't have very much time left, but I wanted to give each of our presenters, Carl, Joel, and Mark, an opportunity to just make a closing statement about where things are going. And you've made some references to that today, but we'd like to go out hopefully on a positive note about where you think we're going for the future. Mark, why don't you start? Well, I think our future begins now with what you've seen us announce today with the expansion to uh, Paramount Global CBS Television Network. And we're looking to grow it from there wherever we can. We're examining every opportunity for expansion. And I think there'll be more to come as the uh, days and months uh, progress. Carl? So I see uh, more multiple languages happening as the streaming services become more and more global. I see uh, the ability to do it in stereo in Dolby Atmos, and um, that that basically what what I think the future is holding. That's exciting. And Joel, oh, oh live would... and live streaming <laughs> services. I'm live sorry. That's... Okay. okay. There Got you it. go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, and I would say, uh, since we've been talking principally about media here, I think that I'm hopeful for amendments to the CVAA, Communications and Video Accessibility Act, that will mandate description on broadcast television at higher levels and actually include a percentage increase for each year that goes by, which is exactly what they did with captioning some 40 years ago. We deserve that with audio description as well. And the other thing I'll, I'll say with regard to media is that, you know, as smartphones become more and more ubiquitous, uh, I think the smartphone is um, in the future of audio description access. Right now, you can go to movie theaters or even be at home uh, and download something called Spectrum Access from uh, Charter Communications, it's an app. Uh, you download the app to your phone, and then if a, a movie comes on in the movie theater or on your television that uh, they own the description to, have license to, you can download the description to the app. The app syncs it automatically with what it hears, and you have audio description through your own headset. So that's an advance, and I think that's gonna proliferate. Absolutely. Great, great, great comments. Um, thank you to our listeners today for tuning in and having good questions for us. Um, if we have other questions, send them to the questions at acb.org and we'll follow up. And I want to thank our presenters as well today for an excellent um, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. everyone. You bet. Bye-bye. Be well.